Reptile Sanctuary, where finally, finally, we're going to get to work on our crocodile habitat. Yes, you heard me right, habitats. We're going to be working on several different habitats for our saltwater crocodiles. And that's because these guys are pretty solitary animals in real life and within the game. In some places, you do see them congregate and in captivity, sometimes you see parks put loads in one enclosure. Not super good for the animals. Crocodiles, specifically saltwater crocodiles by nature, are pretty solitary. They live in pretty solitary environments. They kind of uh, have massive territories just to themselves. They can only come together to mate. And they don't really have any benefit from being in large social groups. So, you know, I thought it'd be cool if we had kind of multiple smaller habitats each well smaller relatively speaking these habitats are pretty huge but so each habitat's going to have its own pair of mating crocodiles so what we're going to be doing today and you will have seen this on screen is that i've split up our central lake into two kind of sections on the right side of our bridge and the two sections are going to be two separate habitats each one with its own pair of saltwater crocodiles. On the right side is to where we're going to be focusing our attention today. And in the next episode, we'll likely start work on the left side. But if there isn't too much work to be done on the left side, I might just do that off screen. But yeah, today we're going to be doing the viewing areas for this particular saltwater crocodile habitat. There's two of them. An above ground side next to the watchtower and an underwater viewing area across the lake. Now that particular building is actually probably one of my most complex builds for one single building because I made it in such a way that it was a lot of weird shapes that were intersecting and if you've played Planet Zoo you know that the path system is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> now like no shade you know no shade, what am I, a millennial? I mean, yeah, but like, yeah, no shade. It is still a great path system and I think it's versatile and if you really learn how to use it, it can be so useful and I do really enjoy using it. But when it comes to weird shapes, oh boy, it is, it is a nightmare. Like if you want to build a circle or a square, yeah, go for it. You can do that. You want to build a wiggly line? Yeah, go for it. But if you want to fill in an oddly shaped space, you're in for a treat because, oh boy, that is, that is tough. That is, that took up a lot of time today. Well, I say today, I actually filmed this in the span of like a week. What I've been doing recently is coming home and spending about two hours a day um, working on my builds. I don't build super fast, so that's kind of why. But yeah, I think at the end, the building turned out really cool has two levels, one underground where you can, underwater so to speak, so you can look at the crocodiles kind of swimming about and doing their thing, and an above ground kind of elevated viewing area where you can look over the lake, see the crocodiles cruising, and also look across this really nice view. And as we go along, you're going to see why exactly this was so hard to build. There's a lot of odd like empty spaces which I eventually had to fill which actually I thought was quite a clever technique. I used some big timber pieces to kind of cre uh, create these little uh, lattices, maybe? Is that the term? Not entirely sure, but you'll see it. I used these timber pieces to create these very, like, modern-looking timber supports, which are kind of exposed, and you can see them. And I thought that turned out really cool. But yeah, so that's kind of what we're building, and you're going to see that on screen as we go along. Let's talk a little bit about the animals. Saltwater crocodiles. That's some of the coolest animals out there, just saying. Like, you know, I'm not biased at all. It's not that I, you know, only like reptiles. No, I love all animals, but, but I'm just saying crocodiles, specifically saltwater crocodiles, are hella dope. They're just so cool. They are the largest reptilian predator on the planet. Obviously, there have been unconfirmed reports of, like, giant anacondas and giant crocodiles, but, again, keyword being unconfirmed. Confirmed? Right now, the saltwater crocodile is the largest reptilian carnivore on the planet. It is an apex predator. It is, once again, hella dope. <laughs> it's just so cool. They're massive, massive animals. They grow up to about 20 feet. And in fact, about two months ago, I was in the Philippines. 
And I think, I can't remember when exactly it was, but villagers captured what was, what ended up being the largest confirmed saltwater crocodile ever caught. And it was named Lolong. And it's kind of preserved right now because it did die eventually in captivity due to uh, pneumonia, I believe. And they preserved this um, this huge, magnificent animal. They preserved it. And you can actually see it at the uh, Natural History Museum, I believe, on full display in Manila. And holy crap, standing next to this huge animal, I, I couldn't believe it. This thing was huge. I believe his, his eventual length was about 20 feet. And 20 feet doesn't doesn't sound too big until you're standing next to one and you're like, oh my god, that is a huge animal. So, yeah, that was, that was a pretty cool experience. I do wish I got to see him when he was alive, but even just seeing his preserved body was, oh boy, that was a breathtaking experience. And um, I have seen some pretty large specimens before. In fact, uh, at the same time when I was in the Philippines, I went to a reptile sanctuary uh, I believe it was on Palawan Island. I can't quite remember. But they had some huge crocodile specimens. Really tremendous animals. And I was just so impressed by just the size and the um, the scope of these animals. <laughs> but, you know, of course, size isn't everything. These animals are really, really interesting in their own right. Besides, obviously, their giant stature and their predatory nature. What's really cool as well is that they're pretty good parents they like really take care of the eggs that they lay and this i'm bringing up because last week in fact last saturday i went up to a wetland park near my house well not near it's about an hour away um this is in malaysia by the way where i'm based so i went to this wetland park and it was pretty abandoned there wasn't really anyone there um i believe it used to be a bit of a tourist hub and uh, it isn't really anymore and I had basically a whole place to myself, and they have a really large lake, which is surrounded by this low concrete barrier, and within the lake, they actually have loads of saltwater crocodiles that they've brought in as part of kind of like a uh, sort of a habitat display thing, where it's kind of more, it's less like a zoo habitat and more like a nature reserve kind of situation, so they do have a huge space, and viewing of the animals isn't really a priority as it would be in a zoo. So I went there not expecting to see much because it's a huge lake and you maybe see crocodiles kind of cruising at a distance. But I got super lucky because I was walking along this barrier and I looked down into it and right next to me was this maybe about seven to eight foot long female crocodile, saltwater crocodile, and its nest. And that was in such a cool experience. And this crocodile was obviously not happy to see me there. It just started hissing and uh, kind of making these uh, faux lunges at me. Obviously, it couldn't reach me because of the barrier. But it, she was not happy to see me. She was super protective of her eggs. And I got my, I got some video of her and uh, made my way out of there because her lunges were getting kind of big. I didn't want to be uh, accidentally, you know, another number on the crocodile fatal uh, fatality list for the year. So, uh, but it was an incredible experience. They're such beautiful animals. And I will be uploading that video, actually, of the crocodile and her nest. Probably later this week at some point, because I do have that mostly edited now. I was really impressed. And yeah, they are good parents. They do take care of the young, especially when they are quite small. They kind of... You probably have seen, like, videos of crocodiles where the young kind of sits on top of the adult snout, which is super cute. And uh, one interesting thing that you might know about crocodiles, uh, or you might not know is that they can regulate the temperature of the eggs to actually change the sex of the baby, which is bonkers. It's one of the really cool things that you see in the animal kingdom that, you know, like, just fire, like, slight changes in temperature. You can just these animals, it's like these animals have such interesting instinctual behaviors. Like, they know when there's a skewed sex ratio in their population and they, they're like, okay, now we have to make these eggs slightly warmer which is insane when you think about it obviously they're not thinking yes this is what i have to do it's all instinctual but that's just such a cool thing and i, I think that's super interesting especially for a reptile and people usually think reptiles aren't particularly intelligent but they really can be you know especially crocodiles crocodiles are super smart 
And another cool thing about crocodiles is that they're more closely related to birds than they are to other reptiles, which is super fascinating, which means they're also more related to dinosaurs than other reptiles, which is super cool. That is something you would definitely want on your CV, more related to dinosaurs than other reptiles. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> but they're just incredible animals. and. You know, when you see large saltwater crocodiles, often they don't really do very much. They kind of just sit down. If they're not, you know, cruising a river or lunging at prey, they kind of just chilling, sitting on a river bank, not doing an awful lot. And that's because they are, they've got this incredible evolutionary ability that when they've eaten a big meal, they can just chill for months, you know, weeks and months without having to eat an awful lot of food which has allowed them to kind of stay the top predator for millions of years. When you don't need to eat all the time, it means you don't need to hunt for prey all the time, which means you don't need to take risks all the time. Very useful when you want to stay alive and reproduce. Like I said, some of the coolest animals on the planet, they're again quite sluggish on land, but in the water, incredibly fast animals. and. Uh, yeah, I just can't say enough cool things about them. I'm thinking of doing this actually for more episodes, talk a little bit more about the animal itself alongside my build. So if you do like uh, hearing about all this, please do leave me a comment and just say, you know, I did like hearing about that fact file, can we have more? I might even try and structure them a bit better so we have an actual fact file for each animal. Because I really like talking about these animals, especially things like the crocodile, which like I've seen you know, up close and in person very recently. So would love to do more of that. Please do let me know in the, in the comments down below. Now that we've done talked, uh, we're done talking about the animal in question. Let's talk a little bit about the park. Now, Bumi Reptile Sanctuary is coming along really nicely. It's kind of well forested. There's not too many more habitats we have left. I'd say we're about 60 to 70% done with the park. So we have to do obviously the other crocodilian, which is the Goreal, which I am saving for probably the last one because it is my favorite animal in the game. And if you want to know what my other favorites are, please do check out my top 10 animals in Planet Zoo video. Uh, I put a lot of effort into that one and I really like it. So please do check that out if you haven't already. But spoiler alert, the Goreal took number one. It's the coolest animal in the game. So I'll probably save that for last. A couple other animals we're going to be adding in soon are the pangolin, which is not a reptile. And all of our small reptiles, so all of our exhibit animals need to go in. And there's a lot of those, obviously we have loads of lizards, we have like the gila monster, we have like two iguana species, the uh, lesser antillian and the green iguana. And we have loads of snakes like the yellow anaconda, eastern brown boa constrictors, so all of those are going to be coming in to the park. And once all of them are in, we're pretty much done. As far as infrastructure goes, I don't think we're going to be introducing any more really big buildings. Um, when it comes to the Gariel habitat, we will be. And obviously the uh, smaller animals need their own kind of uh, areas to be placed in. So those are going to be some bigger buildings. But other than those, like we're not going to be doing anything like the um, Watchtower, I think. So yeah, that's kind of it for Boomy Reptile Sanctuary. Probably get about four, five, six episodes, maybe. I know I say this a lot, but you know, I'm going to try and keep it relatively short because I really want to get on to my next park build, which I have a really good idea for. Not to say I want to rush through Boomy, I'm still going to take my time because I really love this park and I don't want to like, you know, put out rush content or even just for myself, I don't like rushing through builds. I really like taking my time and making sure I really enjoy a build. So I'm going to take my time with that. And once Boomy Reptile is done, it will be done. And we'll likely not revisit it unless we get more reptiles, which, um, you know, fingers crossed we do in the future. Some cool ones to get would be false gariels. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, American alligators. They're really cool. Nile crocodiles. That would be something. Smaller crocodiles would be really cool. Uh, like, well, not crocodile, crocodilians. Like, for example, the caiman. Caimans would be pretty cool. They're a bit smaller. Would like that. Would love a green anaconda. That would be incredible. There are some of the coolest snakes out there. But yeah, so that is kind of it for this episode. What's coming next? 
Um, I am in the midst of working on a tutorial, my first tutorial for Planet 2, which is about how to do rock work. So likely that will be uploaded sometime this week. Again, my schedule is kind of in and out because of work, but I'll try and get that out. And then I'm going to be doing episode 4 of Alessund Wildlife Park. Now, <laughs> I did say in my last Alessund episode that that was the last episode. But I came up with a really good idea that I want to introduce in this next episode and that will be the last for a while and then I can upload that park onto the workshop because I know some people have been asking to get that on the workshop so I will put that up as soon as this next episode is done. And that's it for what's coming next. What did I want to talk about next? Nothing! Nice! <laughs> so we're done. Anyways, if you liked this episode, please do leave me a like, leave me a comment. If you got this far, just um... How's about, yeah, if you got this far, how's about you leave a comment and tell me what your favorite animal is? Would love to hear that. Mine is... I have a lot of favorite animals, so I can't actually answer that question. Probably... the reticulated python. That's my answer. My favorite animal as of today, the reticulated python. They're so cool. <laughs> so yeah, if you came this far, please do leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite animal is. And if you really want, if you really like my content, please do subscribe as well. I try and put out videos a couple times a week. And if you really like the sort of stuff, I'm kind of sticking to this format. We'll do my primarily Planet Zoo stuff, occasionally Jurassic World Evolution, and eventually maybe City Skylines, but primarily Planet Zoo. And I've drawn out that outro long enough. <laughs> so I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.
Thank <laughs> you.